We are back, Gifted Talkers, back again. Brand new episode we just aired. It's a brand new year, which means a brand new Gifted, brand new time slot. We jumped up to the 8 o'clock hour here in Texas, uh, 9 o'clock on the East Coast. Uh, I guess that would actually be like 6 o'clock over there on the West. So, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I'm really excited about it. Y'all know who it is. It's your boy, the ETCW World Heavyweight Champion. Yo, the world, Craig. Shit, not just the city, the world. The Jersey Jackass, your boy, B to the C. Hit me up on all social media, at RealJackassBC, R-E-L-J-C-K-A-S-S-B-C. As you can see, I'm... Uh, I'm riding solo today. Got no one with me, man. Uh, Quad C is out of the country still. So, uh, first get to talkers of the year. I'm riding alone. Uh, I was gonna actually, I was gonna see if I, if Rob wanted to come over, watch, and do the video with me. Um, and then I got lazy all day long and wasn't feeling too well and was just uh, uh, wrapped up and stuff. So. Ended up watching alone, and here I am to talk about it alone. I'm not going to have anyone to bounce ideas off of, so if I forget certain things, that's my bad, yo. That's my bad. But this was a brand new episode. I was really excited. I really enjoyed it. All right, season two, episode 10, Enemy, My Enemy. Uh, really enjoyed this episode, man. This this is how you come back from a break. This is how you return, because this was super dope. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward episode. So what's happening is we're leaving off. All the mutants uh, have been freed. They're all out. And I was thinking we are going to come back to a whole bunch of chaos and war and fighting not exactly true. We come back and we have to go save John, who has been kidnapped by our favorite uh, KKK uh, uh, purifiers. Yeah, it's, I, you know what? They didn't actually bother me as much this time. Um, they were still extremely KKK-ish, like extremely. But anyway, we'll get into it. Uh, so John's been kidnapped by them, and we got to go save him. But apparently we can't do it alone. We have got to get Polaris, and we have got to get Andy to go with us. So uh, we send Marcos to kind of talk with uh, Polaris, figure out if they can find out where John is in the first place. He's being held captive at some compound off in Redneckville, and... Uh, Lord, Lorna finds out about that, finds out where it is, uh, gets the footage, says, hey, Andy, we got to go. Uh, meanwhile, Lauren uh, is still having dreams of Andy. Andy's coming and talking to her, trying to talk to her um, because he's having a hard time dealing with the death of Rebecca, dealing with certain things going on at the uh, Mutant Underground or at the Inner Circle. And Lauren wants nothing to do with it. And she's... She's she knows that that little brother is just he's he's gangster he's out he's on the other side so she doesn't want anything to do with it. Mom and Dad still have hope that somewhere in there that Lauren Lauren is the key to bringing him home. So when uh, we have de decide whether or not we're going to go to the inner circle to get their help, there are some conflicting reports here. Some people. Uh, Marco says we kind of have to go. Lauren doesn't want to use any of their help. Blink doesn't really want to use their help, but realizes it's the only way that they can get John back. And right now, getting John back is what's important. So we decide, hey, we're going to go get him. We're going to have to do what we have to do. So we set up a meeting between Marcos and Lorna. They meet. We find out. They, they get all their going-ons going on. Said, hey, this is what we got to do here. We're looking for John. He's lost. We got to help him. Which goes back to our flashback where uh, Marcos was like, hey, you remember all that time ago. You know, we promised John we'd be there for him, which is what we have our flashback. These flashbacks, um, this is pointless. We didn't need this. It was dumb. And I really don't understand why it is that uh, Polaris is so peppy in the flashbacks. Like, she is super peppy in flashbacks. It's really weird, man. I, I, I just don't get it. So, again, Lorna agrees to help, goes back to the inner circle, does what she has to do to find out this, find where this compound is, find John, and then her and Andy are headed to go and help. Because, uh, you know, once upon a time, they were a part of the underground, and 
they believe that, you know, they, they respected John, especially Andy. And he said, you know, John saved me and my family. So they decided we got to go. Meanwhile, John being held uh, has the worst kind of torture I've ever seen. Uh, and not worst as in bad for him. Just like, this this is how you expect to break a mutant, really? You're going to put headphones on him and make him listen to metal? And don't get me wrong. I would hate that because I'm not a metal fan. John strikes me as a metal guy. He strikes me as a guy who's going to want to listen to that music and probably listens to it at very high uh, decimals. I get it. He has super hearing, so putting it on there, I guess that's supposed to be bad for him. But it just, it, I, I feel like y'all could have found something else. Like maybe a, like a, a beeping noise or something that would have been more annoying rather than just music. So, but... Yeah, and, and, and our, our redneck KKK dude really just wants to, you know, get the power tools and go to town. And Turner's just like, nah, nah, man, I can get to him. I can get to him. And he keeps working on him with this music. Uh, it's, it's just, it was such a weird thing. It really, really was weird. But eventually he kind of starts to break down the walls of John and starts kind of getting some information finding out that Lorna and Andy have actually left the mutant underground and are a part of this secret organization known as the inner circle who apparently no one has ever heard of the inner circle why do you have a name for your group if uh, you don't you know you don't uh, advertise. Like, if no one's going to know who you are, why do you name your group? Like, why don't you just be a group? You're like, yeah, it's, you know, we're together. You don't need to brand yourself as the inner circle if you're not going to let anybody know what the inner circle is. You know, at least Magneto always said, we are the Brotherhood of Mutants. Like, he always, you know, told people, we are the Brotherhood. God, get with it, inner circle. So, anyway, um, now T Turner's finally starting to get some information, but back on the other side, Lorna and Andy have shown up to, I guess, this apartment that everybody's staying in. Uh, I don't know where it came from, but apparently this is a nice little house. It's, it's kind of cute. Uh, I'd stay there, I'm just saying. And when they open that door, they're only expecting Polaris. And when Mom opens the door and sees Andy... This was a great moment. I really enjoyed how this played out because you can see the disdain on Lauren's face for Andy and how she does not want or trust him. Uh, but Mom is just so excited to see her son again. And Dad so excited to see his son again. To see, the, you know, someone they've been searching for and trying to get back. They are just immediately overprotective parents who have not seen their child in forever and it's it was such a great scene i think this really worked and it is exactly how it should have played out i really enjoyed how it played it out and i really played it played it that's a word uh and i i really think like this was a great great reunion to have and how they did this was absolutely perfect well, we got the band back together, and now we're going to go to this compound. We're going to take it down. There's landmines. There's electric fences. There's a bunch of rednecks with guns. Uh, we got to get in there. And it feels like, you know, they're like, we have to have Polaris and Andy. I feel like they could have done this by themselves. I feel like they didn't actually need them. But for the sake of the episode, we got to do what we got to do, and we got to get them there. So it is what it is. I'm okay with it. It was fun. That's something to just kind of overlook there. Uh, really excited to go in here. And this was a fun uh, little attack on this compound. I really enjoyed how we did it. We go in. We have a little... Before we get in there, we have a little one-on-one -on -one with Andy and Lauren. Where Lauren is kind of starting to see what Andy's going through. And, um, you know, first she's real angry about him. But then she starts to see that Rebecca girl, she ain't alive no more. And it, it hit Andy... Cause that was that was Andy's bay, and she might have been a little cray cray, but he loved her. So Lauren's starting to see, oh man, he's really hurting and he's struggling. So we bust in here, we send in uh, Polaris and uh, 
Marcos on a uh, distraction mission, which ends up distracting all the guards over to where they are, and they're just going to town. Great moment with uh, Polaris's Magneto helmet thing. Uh, love, love the interaction there between those two. Oh, also jumping around here. Sorry about this. Uh, when they're on their way up there, and uh, Lorna and Marcos are arguing in the car, and Blink's got to be like, "Yo, y'all just." Calm down. We got to go save John, and then y'all can go back to hating each other and bickering. Just shut up for a damn car ride. Meanwhile, over in the other car, uh, the Struckers are trying to convince Andy that, you know, he needs to come home, and they've changed, and they're telling him about Pops' powers and all that, and Lauren's still not interested in it. Now, this is before their little heart-to-heart, -heart, and I feel like Lauren actually would have been in the other car. Like... Like, when they're setting up to go on the ride, I feel like Lauren's going to be like, I'm not riding with Andy. I'm getting in the other car. But, you know, that's that, that's not really important. So, uh, But, yeah, I love that moment as well. So, anyway, back to back to the compound. We break in there. We're doing this. We're going in. And uh, Marcos and Polaris are just setting up a distraction, going to town, blowing up mines, using powers, looking all x men -y. The band's back, working together. We're playing all right. We're doing the damn thing. We're making the distraction. And then in go Blink and uh, the, the Strucker twins, or brothers, and brother and sister, Lauren and Andy. And they walk in with a purpose, yo. Like, they go into town, vroom, vroom. Blink's blowing her uh, portals and dude shooting himself, vroom. Boom, I loved it, dude. That was a great, great episode. A uh, great, great moment in this. Um, and now Turner is pissed. Because Turner was believing John. And now he sees Polaris and Andy working with the underground. And so now he's mad. Now he's angry. Now he thinks John lied to him. Which he didn't, but you saw how this was going to play out. As soon as they started talking about this, I'm like, oh, I started predicting and seeing what was going to happen. I'm like, I see what's going to happen. And I'm wondering if this is why they moved to the later time slot, because then it got dark. This might have been the darkest I've seen The Gifted get. But Turner straight up shotgun blasts John at Point Blake Rage. Boom. Right in the chest. And, man, they did not hold back on this scene. It was brutal. Um, then he does it twice more. Even to the point... That the uh, the redneckiest of the rednecks, uh, his little KKK buddy, is like, yo, we got to go. Let him just, just we got to get out of here now. And Turner goes to shoot him in the face. He's like, dude, not important. We got to go. Just let him alone. Like, I didn't, like, that's how far Turner has gone now. And it was, it was a great turn there. And it was a dark and rough scene. Um. Turner ends up getting out, but then here come Lauren and Andy, who blow the door open, and it traps uh, the redneck dude pretty bad. And, uh, you know, we go back to him, Turner comes back and saves him, and he's ready to go after the mutants later on, but now we're getting, uh, we're getting John out of there, and uh, we're, we're coming out, we're, we're getting to the cars, and here comes one last purifier. Goes to shoot, misses them, Almost gets Lauren. Andy doesn't like that. And Andy goes off on this guy. Now mom and dad are seeing what Andy has become. They're seeing how vicious he and violent and evil he really is. And this was the Andy I liked. I liked this part right here. Um, because he's throwing the dude around and he breaks both him, both his knees. And they, it was it was brutal. And again, this goes to that darker nature. Maybe that's why they moved to this later uh, later time slot. But um, you see the difference, and you see that Lauren is not having it either. And I think all oh, I'll wait till I get to preview, uh, uh, predictions before I get into that there. But uh, mom and dad are flipping over what this what it, what Andy's become. They, they they're scared. Um, man, we now. We, we, but we got John back. That's the important thing. We're getting the cars. We row. We go our separate ways. Uh, Turner is prepared to go to war and and kill everyone. All these mutants now. Um, he's not having this no more. Uh, Blink and Thunderbird. Thunderblink seem to be back. You know, firing all cylinders. It seems like this whole little ordeal has got them got them back together. 
and then we've sent our other guys back to the inner circle now. So it was a really good episode. I really, really enjoyed it. I had this might be one of my new favorite episodes of the Gifted Man. Um, this this is how you come back. You come back with a pow. You hit them. You hit us hard, and I really did enjoy it. Uh, positive wise, like I said, um, I really enjoyed. Um, the the, uh, the the scene in the car with Blink and Marcos and Polaris. Uh, I really enjoyed Lauren and Andy's conversation. That was great. And them going in there and just going to town. Boom, boom, boom. Loved that. Mom, mom seeing Andy for the first time in the reunion there was a really good scene. I enjoyed a lot. There's so much to enjoy about this. My only real negative was the flashback scene. It was kind of pointless and we did not need it. So, what was, I don't know, it, it just, uh, okay, you made a promise and Polaris was peppy. It, it, it was, it was just, we didn't need it. It was, it was extra stuff that was not needed. We could have used more uh, fighting in the compound for the, for that time or something. I don't know. So, other than that, man, incredible freaking episode. What is the common? It looks like a lot of foam. All roads seem to be leading to Lauren versus Andy round two. It looks like we're going to get it because at the end of this uh, episode, we see Lauren and Andy both going to train and the juxtaposition of how they were showing them, you know, Lauren in the junkyard, Andy in the little uh, uh, training center in the inner circle. Very Rocco, Rocky Drago style here, man. You got, you know, Rocky out in the in the wilderness, out in the, uh, the the mountains doing his training, and then Drago's got all his nice equipment to help him train. You got Lauren here in her junkyard. You got Andy in the uh, training center in the inner circle. And I liked how it would, like, it would cut back and forth. Like, it would be his face, and then it would phase into her face. And, and she looks pissed. Boy, let me tell you what. I can't wait to see this fight between them. Um, I'm hoping next episode we get some more of the mutants that are all out and free. Because I was under the impression that that was a big deal. And it didn't seem like it was on this episode. So we kind of just overlooked that. But, you know. I'm really excited for it, and I cannot wait to finish out this season. But uh, I know this is a much shorter episode, you guys. Uh, I'm sorry that I didn't have anyone to bounce any ideas off of. I've, I've been a little under the weather after the holidays. It's been a little wrapped up, but I do enjoy this. I had a lot of fun sitting here and talking with you guys. Don't forget, use the hashtag GiftedTalkers on Twitter to join the conversation. Don't forget to comment down below. Did you like this episode of The Gifted? Are you excited for next week's? What do you think is coming? What were your favorite moments of this episode? Don't forget, let us know down below in the comments. And uh, don't forget to follow Matt at MoveTheJoystick, M-O-V-E-T-H-E-J-O-Y-S-T-I-C-K. Uh, Matt's going to get himself a shot at that ETCW World Heavyweight Championship because we got 100 subscribers to my YouTube channel just in the nick of time. So, Matt, respect. Don't forget to go over to YouTube.com slash JackassNation and check that out, guys. Until next week. This has been your boy, ETCW World Heavyweight Champion, Jersey Jackass, B to the C. Hit me up on all social media, at RealJackassBC, R-E-L-J-C-K-A-S-S-B-C. It is what it is, up every single Thursday. A lot of great episodes going up, so don't forget to miss out on that. And a brand new Jackass 1 is up on Cinelinks right now as well. Don't forget to follow Cinelinks at Cinelinks and check them out, Cinelinks.com, for all your news, reviews, editorials, and more. Till next time, guys.